Okay, we will now get started. So hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Derek Kamenik. I'm an OPC UA evangelist from Matricon and I'll be your host today. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentations, uh, please uh, type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar uh, control panel. We will cover these questions either during the presentation if possible, otherwise in the QA uh, period afterwards. And if we run out of time, we will also answer them offline. So your questions are very important to us uh, and will be answered. So please do uh, submit them if you have any questions. So today we'll be presenting on the introducing the OPC UA MT Connect companion specification. And we really have a powerhouse cast of presenters, each of whom will cover key aspects of this broad and exciting topic. So the presenters are Tom Burke, he is a strategic marketing officer with the OPC Foundation, and he also happens to be the OPC Foundation founder. Uh, Ross Waddell, Managing Director of the MT Connect Institute. He's been with the Institute since 2014. Will Sobel, he is the Chief Strategy uh, Officer of Vimana, uh, an industrial AI platform for manufacturing and Chief Architect for the MT Connect standard. And as well, we have Stan Brubaker. He is the President of Beyond, Inc and he's the co-chair of the OPC UA MT Connect Joint Working Group. Stan has over 25 years uh, experience developing factory automation and MES solutions. So with that, uh, now without further ado, uh, I'll turn this over to, uh, uh, to our presenters. So uh, actually first let's cover the agenda. So, what we'll cover is the introduction. Uh, so Tom will take us through and give us an overview of the OPC Foundation, um, the overall OPC Foundation organization, and to give you some reference on you know the scope and the size of this organization and uh, what it brings to the table. Uh, after that, we will have Russ give you an overview of the MT Connect uh, standard and its uses. Uh, Stan will provide an overview of the OPC UA synergy with MT Connect, and Will will dive into some of the details of the actual companion specification itself. Okay, so with uh, that, Tom, I'll take it away. You can take it away. Thank you, Derek. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to the OPC Foundation MT Connect webinar. We've got a lot of exciting things to talk about with respect to uh, the organization and the companion specification itself and the work we are doing. So it's a very exciting opportunity for us. And for some reason, <laughs> the screen doesn't advance automatically as quickly as I'd like. So from an OPC Foundation perspective, we started in 1995. Uh, we are a, a multi-vendor, multi-platform uh, international standards organization. Uh, our specifications are recognized with IEC 62541. Our deliverables basically are specifications, technology, and certification. And we really like to think of ourselves as a whole ecosystem with a number of suppliers that build toolkits and training to really advance the state of the interoperability in industrial automation and beyond. One of the key things we have is we have over 650 members in the organization, and the board of directors is driven from a, a quite a large set of companies that are actually driving the technology in very committed open standards, including Microsoft, Honeywell, Rockwell, SAP, Yokogawa, Schneider, Siemens, Iconics, ABB, Beckoff, and Ascolab. So in addition to myself being on the board of directors. So it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, from an OPC perspective because we've been recognized by what's known as the IAOT consortium around the world. Uh, there's a lot of things that are exciting with respect to the Industrial Internet Consortium. Last two weeks ago, I was in Raleigh for the IIC meeting where we formed a formal liaison with the Industrial Internet Consortium, and we're going to be doing a lot of work with them specifically developing OPC UA test beds, and there'll be a lot more on that, and I encourage you to contact me if your company's interested in being part of that important initiative. But 
Industry 4.0, I hope everyone has heard of. Uh, this is really rocking the world from a European and beyond perspective. And OPC Way has actually been recognized as part of the reference architecture for Industry 4.0, as well as many of the other regional equivalents, recognizing the value of interoperability and recognizing what OPC Way brings to the table. So what I like to talk about is from a OPC UA perspective, uh, it's the industrial framework really enabling secured standardized data and interfaces. Uh, we've always focused on interoperability, and that's the key of OPC since 1995. It's been widely adopted across the world in industrial automation and beyond. And with OPC Way, we've focused on the whole architecture, basically providing a complete infrastructure for data modeling and security. And MT Connect is one of the key strategies and key companion specifications that we have actually developed that leverages the data modeling capability directly of OPC UA. So when you think about data modeling, you think about the ability to take data from complex operations, machines, process, discrete, and you can have this generically accessed by, you know, uh, visualization applications, history, and ultimately actually getting that data directly into the cloud. Security is very important with IIoT and specifically everything we are doing and we're getting a lot of recognition from a global perspective as a security organization. Uh, from a collaboration perspective, I almost like to say that the C in OPC now stands for collaboration because reality is we have partnered with so many organizations deliberately to help them model their data in these companion specifications, allowing them to have seamless interoperability for moving their complex data and the structured data and all the metadata into other applications through the OPC UA architecture. And specifically with the activities of, you wanna have IIoT devices be able to connect up to these things and be able to grab the data and understand the data and actually, actually get the data into the cloud-based applications as well. One of the biggest things we're doing is obviously the industrial marketplace in automation, but we've really spanned the globe in terms of many other verticals, and we're very focused at everything related to discrete and process, but we're also very active in engineering, we're very active in tested measurement, we're active in transportation, in addition to all the activities with the oil and gas and pharmaceutical. So this is a partial list of the collaborations that we're doing right now. You can go to the OPC Foundation website and you can get details on every one of these collaborations. Today's focus is really to talk about machine tools and the companion specification we've done with MT Connect. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Russ, who's now going to talk about the details behind MT Connect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Uh, my name is Russ Waddell. I'm the Managing Director for the MT Connect Institute. And I'll give a quick background about kind of what MT Connect is, how it relates to OPC, and why the OPC companion spec specifically is important uh, before we dig into a little bit more details and implementation from the, uh, from the other presenters. So M MT Connect itself is a is an application. Um, it's more it's directly a standard, whereas the OPC UA um, architecture, UA standing for Unified Architecture, is implementing multiple standards across multiple industries. So if you think about the the um, organizations that Tom just mentioned, those standards bodies and standards developers and the standards they produce are all implemented through the OPC UA framework. So MT Connect. Uh, is really focused on a fairly narrow set of, of things. And, and that's a place where it's important for MT Connect to see what is a standards ecosystem as opposed to a set of sort of competing or independent standards. And I think for a long time, MT Connect and OPC have, have been talking with one another and have been working together on sort of driving this standards ecosystem point of view of the world. So as we look at other segments and other uh, other markets outside of necessarily the industrial space, we've seen standards harmonization um, that brings us internet technology, telecoms. Uh, th there's a lot of examples of, of where standards develop and enable 
better technology uh, in the marketplace. And those are sort of examples that we look to. So for OPC and MT Connect, uh, it's kind of a shared perspective on this rapidly developing standards ecosystem. We put together the first uh, back with OPC in the early 2010s. Uh, this rewrite is coming at a time when there's dramatically more movement towards uh, standards interoperability than there was when we originally did this. But the thinking hasn't really changed much over the last decade. The thing that's changed is the market acceptance of that idea and those ideas and the amount of technology that's actually out there to take advantage uh, of these standards. So the perspective from an implementer's point of view is not so much to ask you know, which standard do I want to use, it's to ask more specifically what am I trying to accomplish and what's the business case for one or multiple standards. Um, really that's the same as specking any other technology, whether it's a piece of hardware, a piece of software, or standard. Uh, it's all the same question. What am I trying to accomplish? How is this going to help the bottom line of my business? And specifically ask the question, what does a standard do for me? So as you're looking at MP MT Connect, uh, say, what is MT Connect actually accomplishing? How is that changing a business outcome? And say the same thing for OPC. Do I need OPC here? And what is that actually accomplishing um, to, to get to this business outcome? And both the OPC Foundation and the MT Connect Institute are of the opinion that generally you're going to be looking at multiple standards working together to get the best and most significant business outcomes, uh, particularly sort of in the Industry 4.0 or Industrial IoT space. So those are the questions that you're trying to answer, and we encourage anybody that's wanting to implement either of our standards to be looking more broadly at what the what the entire landscape is and how the ecosystem affects their business. Derek, can I get you to advance the slide for me, please? So what MT Connect is doing is specifically covering uh, a domain model. So in the space of machine tools and manufacturing technology, we cover specific vocabulary, um, the definitions of words and terms, and, and setting a limits on what those words are and how they can be used, as well as giving context. So what we refer to as semantics. So the, the semantics gives context on top of just the definitions of words. Okay, thanks. Um, the vocabulary, the definition, you know, in this example, what is the thing we're looking at? Is this a claw? Is it a crane? Is it a hook? Um, the, the definition can be defined just by taking this sort of in a vacuum and saying, well, it's got, you know, two fingers. It appears to have a pivot in the middle, so we'll call it a we'll call it a gripper or something like that. But when you take that in context and you add semantics, you add additional uh, information that sort of surrounds that item, all of a sudden there's a more full definition. So when you understand how the thing itself relates to the other things around it, you have a much more complete definition. So what may have been a crane or, or a gripper in isolation, once we see it on the end of a robotic arm, now we might call it end of arm tooling, we might call it an end effector or something like that. The scope that we're specifically focused on with MT Connect, we, the standard was, was created by the Association for Manufacturing Technology, which is the machine tool builder and, and cutting tool and distributor and software companies uh, trade association uh, in the United States. Uh, so it covers that type of manufacturing technology equipment. There's not the only domain model out there. Uh, MT Connect kind of covers a, a slice there's other domain models around everything from oil and gas to plastics to pharmaceuticals to building management. And as time progresses, all of these uh, domains that touch sort of an industrial space, we see coming together and uh, all working together to give you a more thorough and more complete uh, picture of, of how things will all work together to kind of enable the, the digital industrial future. So we're not the only domain model. We see OPC as a, as a critical piece to connecting MT Connect to the other domain models. And you know where you need specific semantics and specific definitions in, in the space that MT Connect addresses in manufacturing technology, uh, adopting MT Connect is important. But where you need to pass that information between and across other domains uh, or create better interoperability with other standards, OPC is a critical piece of that puzzle. And 
the interoperability between MT Connect, OPC, and other standards is the way we see the world going. Uh, this companion spec specifically is a critical piece of that. Um, it's the 50th or so companion spec and was also the very first, uh, within the first five companion specs that OPC um, produced. Uh, but the MT Connect Institute has really been on board with that model of building companion specs and kind of expanding out the universe of standards for industrial applications from the very beginning with uh, with the OPC Foundation. And it's a partnership that we see proceeding uh, pace and continuing on into the future along with uh, other OPC partners as well. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Stan. Uh, Stan Brubaker is the, one of the co-chairs of the OPC MT Connect Joint Working Group. Stan, take it away. Stan, you're muted. Stan, can you unmute un un your mic? I was muted by the organizer. Sorry. We can hear you now. Very good. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I've been with the OPC Foundation uh, sharing and, and evangelizing about OPC UA for the last number of years. When I heard about MT Connect, which is relatively new to me, and as I became the co-chair for the working group, I really saw the value of the two coming together. Uh, MT Connect is clearly a a proven information model, widely adopted in the industry. Uh, OPC UA, on the other hand, as shown by by both Tom and Russ, is a, is a broad industry technology that gives access to information models and can and can define many different types of information models. As shown on the slide, there's many different uh, companion specifications crossing different industries. And OPC UA provides a common interface to all those information models, which is uh, bringing the value of, of MT Connect together with OPC UA. Um, the, this gives access not only to MT Connect data, but as, a, as an analyst, uh, information scientist, you can pull together information that exists in the different information models that might exist throughout the plant. It also opens up the MT Connect data to many different applications as OPC Way has become widely adopted, SCADA solutions, MES, ERP, and even the cloud. Azure has an interface now with OPC UA, so it gives much broader access to the data by going through the OPC UA standard. Um, the, Security has been part of OPC UA from the beginning. It's very robust and it's it's uh, built in and has been tested by third parties, uh, which brings a, a stronger security to the MT Connect implementation. Uh, the previous implementation or the current agent implementation is streaming data, which is not as secure XML going across the wire. Uh, so OPC UA brings that security. Uh, it, OPC UA is, as kind of shown, indicated in the diagram, it's, it's both vertical and horizontal, so it can be used for machine-to-machine -machine communications, coordinating uh, activities between equipment, as well as vertical integrations to the high level systems, the enterprise, the cloud, and so forth. In addition, OPC UA also gives the ability to send commands, to do command and control. It has methods. That is something that the MT Connect standard does not support uh, as a read-only type of data access technology. 
OPCUA brings that as an additional capability to be able to command and send commands to equipment. So in summary, um, access to broad ecosystem of software, uh, you know, everything from the, the SCADA to the ERP and, and the cloud, uh, secure communications uh, at all levels uh, and at an object level. It's very granular, very secure um, capability on top of OPC UA. The command and control that was mentioned and combining all the information models and, and the MT Connect data model along with all the other industry models to provide a complete factory information model. So here's a more specific example of MT Connect along with PACML, which is an industry standard for packaging. And as shown in this diagram, you can have uh, different uh, standards existing at different machines uh, in the factory. Uh, and again, being OPC UA, uh, all being accessed through OPC UA, they can all be accessed together, it basically creating a global namespace across the factory, uh, across all the different companion specifications, the main information models, which is very powerful. And, you know, with the packaging and the robotics at the end, which is kind of typical, you have MT Connect working with PACML in a, in a pretty natural way and, and gives uh, the complete interface data capability between the different types of equipment as shown here. Also, OPC UA is embeddable. So you, you can put the OPC UA server with the MT Connect, the PACML, uh, ISA 95, whatever the data model might be, can reside right on the equipment. So you have an uh, embedded um, information model with the equipment, be it in a PLC or on a microprocessor, giving access to all that data directly from the, from the equipment. So we had five use cases uh, coming into the companion specification standard that we defined. The first one is gateways, which provides the interoperability between OPC UA and the MT Connect data, uh, MT Connect agent, the, the traditional MT Connect implementation. So you have, and that's important for backward compatibility as uh, machine companies start adopting OPC UA with MT Connect, uh, they can connect it to their existing agent. And for any clients that are already interfacing with MT Connect agents, they can still, uh, that interface can continue to live on as well as uh, the new OPC UA interface. So that uh, gives the full capability to interoperate between the MT Connect of old and the new MT Connect with OPC UA. Software vendors might want to have a more open uh, capability in having both the MT Connect agent and the OPC UA server. So taking in data, doing some value add in between, be it uh, some kind of analysis, some kind of logic, and then offering up that data both in an MT Connect agent uh, interface as well as an OPC UA server interface, giving uh, uh, software of both types, both uh, MT Connect traditional as well as all those SCADA, ERP, and other software, the cloud uh, access with the OPC UA interface. And as mentioned before, with the combination of multiple uh, information models uh, for different industries, MT Connect, PACML, ISA 95, and others, uh, you're able to combine those to get much more, uh, much richer analytics uh, across your factory. Also with the security that was mentioned, you can securely uh, send all that information to the cloud 
and perform analytics at the cloud level, uh, which is a great advantage. And finally, the, the command and control capability. As mentioned before, with OPC UA, you can send commands to equipment. So in an M2M, a machine-to-machine -machine kind of collaboration in a packaging line uh, with a robot palletizer, that's that type of configuration. The machines can communicate directly with uh, sending commands and viewing the current state of the machine and create a complete machine-to-machine uh, -machine, uh, collaboration for a manufacturing process. And lastly, I, I just wanted to highlight again the security because it is such an important part of OPC UA and I think a, a very big value add uh, to MT Connect, uh, the full security. It has been uh, validated by third parties, and it's it's adopted by the, the biggest industry uh, organizations, the IIC, as well as Industry 4.0. It's designed for evolution. So basically, the, the, the different uh, crypto libraries and things just plug into OPC UA. So it's, it's connecting to those uh, standard security uh, technologies as opposed to having it built in. So it will it will uh, adopt, adapt, I should say, to the security changes as they occur over time. So it's a very powerful part of OPC UA, and it gives security at all levels, uh, even at a very granular level down to the object, uh, but also all the way from source at the equipment level, all the way through the different layers out to the cloud. And that was my last slide. So Russ will, sorry, Will will now pick up with the specifics of the companion specification. Excellent, thanks uh, Stan and everybody. Uh, Tom and Russ for the um, overview. What I'm gonna do is go through a little bit about how we actually developed the um, companion specification. And eventually things will advance. There we go. I don't know. Wait. Okay, so our design goals for the MT Connect uh, standard were to provide this full, full round trip capability. So basically, what we were doing is we we're trying to get to a companion spec where I could take data coming from MT Connect, go to OPC UA, and then if I wanted to even go back to MT Connect without any loss of the semantic richness you get from MT Connect and the capabilities you get from OPC UA. So we wouldn't lose anything. We'd only gain capability by using um, OPC UA. So the model hues very closely to the MT Connect model. There's information that is contained within the model, which exactly replicates what you'll get in MT Connect. And it can be used for additional semantics, or if you're used to MT Connect, you'll see exactly, and we'll show you in a second, exactly what, how that information manifests itself. And we also wanted to make sure that we had a full set of semantic content. So everything was contextualized as it is in MT Connect. We have all of the different um, information types. So we have you know, our components, our um, data items. We also have composition, which allows us to further contextualize data within a certain component and we have specifications and a lot of other information that allows you to really understand what this device is doing and how the diff various different components fit together. And that's kind of the value of MT Connect is this rich information model that allows us to understand what the data means and how it affects the various different functions of that piece of equipment. So going to OPC UA, now OPC UA is interesting. It's not just an information model, but it's a bit um, idiomatic. It has its own way of doing things for certain types of information. This is actually a good thing. Like if you talk about a data variable, a data variable in OPC UA 
has some existing concepts such as units and ranges and so and things along that line. Empty Connect has those too. So when you're using, when you're mapping from one to the other, when you're mapping from the Empty Connect view of like, let's say a sample, which is what we call it, which maps to an OPC UA analog value or analog unit value, a data type, um, you need to carry that information across, but also make it idiomatically the same as the way OPC UA would represent that information. And that way, a client using the, the data coming out of OPC UA knows exactly how to interpret that. They don't have to relearn how to interpret all the empty connect data because we've decided to go away from the OPC UA foundational model and do something ourselves. Same thing for alarms, condition. We have similar concepts, but we have to be able to provide an exact replica. So that was one of the major um, uh, goals of our, uh, our work when we did the mapping. And um, I think we came up with a really robust model. Let me do some advancing here. There we go. So the information model, just I'm gonna go through, we'll do some more of these webinars and dig a little bit deeper into um, the actual model. I wanted to just give a very high level um, overview of what we're doing here. So if you look on the on left, actually there's a OPC UA Empty Connect server running right now, and I'll give you links to it in a second, um, with a number of machines. These are machines from the uh, NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. They're running in the engineering lab. They have a bunch of publicly available Empty Connect um, devices, and all those have um, valid information models for Empty Connect. And what I've done is I put a gateway up there for everybody to play around with. And that gateway can be accessed publicly and no security on it. Just, uh, you know, it's replicating all the information from these various different uh, systems. Also, also, I got the three um, machines from Mazek running up there as well. So if you look at the information model, if we look at the way it's laid out, um, at the top level, you have the um, you have the devices, which you can see the device names like a Herco. This is a Mazek machine from the Mazek site up at the top on if you look on the right and then you can see the various different data items like asset changed asset removed availability if we go down to things like here's a linear x-axis and with the linear x-axis we have an actual position which then you can see the category the coordinate system these are all the semantics from MT connect so we know the types we know the name we know the native units units we also have the opc ua eu information which is their units information so we have sort of done a dual model here where we have again this full round trip capability and now you know that this is a linear x-axis which is the longest axis perpendicular to the spindle and this is its actual position and if you look at the uh Coordinate system, it's a machine coordinate system. So now we know this is the action, this is the position in machine coordinates. This happens to be, if you look at interrogate the data here, this is the actual position in uh, work coordinates. You have fat, feed rate, state. So everything is readable here. From Empty Connect standpoint, you can basically just interpret the values, the browse names, and know exactly what that data means because it's all tied into the Empty Connect information model. Same thing goes for things like um, programs, execution, controller mode. These are controlled vocabularies. They have a very fixed set of states. Um, controller mode can be automatic manual, um, manual data entry, a lot of other states around uh, machine tools and, um, and execution is active, ready, et cetera. So these are all defined very explicitly in the Empty Connect standard. And then we have things like conditions. And this is a motion program condition, which tells you if something go has gone wrong with your motion program. We have all the various different OPC UA condition. Again, we've layered right on top of the OPC UA condition model and provided all the information here as well. So again, it's this dual model. Again, we're trying to leverage the strengths of both the standards, provide uh, a, synth a synthesis of the two, which gives you a very powerful way of accessing all the uh, semantic data in MT Connect. Um, and MT Connect has the fat definitions for many different areas of the machine, like the uh, pneumatic system, hydraulics, electrical system, all these different um, accessories. Uh, everything is semantically defining, textualized. So whenever you look at the information, like loads, pressures, temperatures, etc., you can tell exactly what they refer to, down to a motor or um, a gearbox or other areas of that 
uh, piece of equipment. Um, so going on to um, oh, wait, things like, so just to focus a little bit more on the conditions. Um, so conditions are a complex area of the standard and both the standards. Um, they can have multiple activations. So we map, mapped it on to the OPC UA concept of what we call um, branching. So when you have multiple alarms, let's say, for a motion program, you have multiple syntax errors or multiple systems alarms where like a PLC is throwing out multiple alarms at the same time. And empty Connect, those will be represented as multiple alarms existing at the same instance in time. OPC UA has a great way of doing this using what they call branching. So we use their branch IDs and we've layered on top of their whole state model and everything else to provide the same capability um, in Empty Connect, where we have a semantic alarm, which ties to a semantic type. We've created all of the classes, and that's what these uh, class IDs and class names refer to. So we've layered on top of that to be able to give you the semantic relationships between what the alarm means and what the condition means with respect to the OPC, oh, sorry, the Empty Connect model in OPC UA, and providing, again, this rich information so now you know exactly what that alarm is with respect to in their device, what component is respect to, as well as what area of the machine it's also um, affecting. In Empty Connect, you have three different types. You have normal warning and fault. Warning means that something is going wrong, and fault means that something is already needing manual attention. So I implemented Empty Connect because uh, one of the conditions is that you needed to have a running implementation um, to be able to prove the uh, the um, companion spec was actually implementable, which is a great thing. You should always have that, I believe. Um, I agree with them completely on this. And um, what we did is we developed, I think, what Stan referred to as a gateway. And this is something that uh, my company, Vamana, developed for the companion spec. So we used the um, Metricon Flex OPC UA uh, SDK as our um, Foundation. We've been using the Unified Automation UA Expert tool to be able to do the viewing, and you can do it yourself. The uh, URL is right up there. It's running over on Rackspace on Linux. In um, this uh, URL is opc.mtk.org and the 4840, which is a standard uh, um, discovery port. And uh, what we've done is we've taken all the data coming off the MT Connect agent, which again is mirroring from these various different machines at uh, NIST and Mazak. And these machines are in Gaithersburg, Maryland and Florence, Kentucky. The Rackspace server is running over in Dallas, Texas, and I've been viewing it over in Oakland. So this is, you know, a truly, um, we've covered the entire US, I think. The nice thing about using a gateway approach to start out with is you can first off compare between the empty connect agent data coming off the probe and the samples and the current that we're going to give you. And I'll give you the URLs for those in a second. And you can get the real-time streaming data coming off of MT Connect as well. And then make sure that the OPC UA um, representation is a pure representation or the accurate representation of that data and compare and contrast it to. And I welcome you to do that. Um, you can just hold the two side by side and see how the model was instantiated. You can download the node set from the running OPC UA server, if you want to implement your own, we encourage everybody to do so. And then verify that everything is operating correctly. Um, the data is coming live off of these machines. So basically we're getting real-time streaming data coming off of these very certain pieces of equipment as they're used. You'll see alarms, you'll see movement, you'll see the states change, and um, you can see how everything um, operates. So one of the nice things also that you get is um, there's already somewhere between 50 to 100,000 machines using MT Connect right now, or capable of using MT Connect. We know that there's a lot of machines that are sold with MT Connect um, embedded right in them, like um, all Mazaks and Akumas come with um, MT Connect adapters. So there's a lot of equipment out there that you could just access this data immediately in OPC UA. And again, this gives you that whole, 
um, ecosystem ability to develop your one client application, which can read from all these different pieces of equipment, your packaging and assembly equipment, as well as your manufacturing equipment. So that gives you a lot of power right out of the box. This solution here, like we've developed, um, allows you to take any existing MT Connect set of machines and immediately represent them in, M in OPC UA and have that uh, almost instantaneous capability without having to write any code at all. So that's that's the power of the gateway, is just a translation between these two standards. So as we said, um, the companion specification has been released and we've done the various different parts of MT Connect 1, 2, and 3. Um, we've implemented them all with uh, OPC Way and tried to remain as idiomatically um, uh, loyal as possible. And if you want to get started with this, we suggest you read the uh, MT Connect OPC Way companion specification. It's rather long, I warn you, it is over 200 pages. But um, you can read over quickly the first um, sections, which go a lot of what uh, Tom, Stan, and Russ covered, basically the overview of MT Connect and some of the use cases. Part eight is uh, most of the mapping details that you can get into. It shows you how to convert between the two and gives you all the rules for things like uh, mapping the browse names and the types and all the data from one standard to the other. And then uh, part nine is all of the details on the actual types. So you can read through that and understand how our type model works. Um, once you've done that and you sort of understand OPC UA and MT Connect, if we read um, the MT Connect uh, standard uh, parts one, two, and three, or just browse through them, you can see how the two tie together. If you already know OPC UA, then you should be able to get a, a pretty good idea how to, how to do the work. Um, you then need to just get an OPC UA SDK and um, the MT Connect node set is downloadable from various different places. Um, and we have, again, the running example. So if you want to download it from there or you want to um, get it from um, the site, we can um, definitely give you some more information about how to get it. And then you compare. So these are the two sites. So we have um, the um, SMS testbed at NIST which is running about a dozen machines right now. Um, some a couple of Mazak, some Hercos, uh, George Fisher, a uh, high-speed milling machine. And then we have the um, Mazak machines, which are running over the Mazak lab over in Florence, Kentucky. Those are 56, 10, 11, and 12. And um, then, yeah, just uh, get going. If you wanna just try to use the MT Connect OPC UA's companion spec, for developing client applications or see how it all hangs together. Please uh, just feel free to poke at the um, OPC TCP um, you know, link up there and with your uh, OPC UA client and um, go for it. And if you find problems, this is again, this is very early um, implementation. So this is just a proof of concept. Um, if it falls over or it has problems or you notice something is wrong with it or I've screwed something up, please tell me because I would, we, we need feedback. Um, if you um, read the uh, companion specification, you find problems with the companion specification or you find that I've made a mistake or we've made a mistake in the uh, documentation, please tell us and uh, we can log all the issues over on Mantis. And um, we're going to get the uh, spec out for the 90 day to review and we're hoping that we're going to be able to get this as um, through the whole process and officially released in the very near future and you'll be seeing um, all the goodness of the combination of these two standards together and uh, in the very near future. So um, that's really the what we have. Thank you. Thank you, Will. That was, that was an excellent uh, presentation. And thank you, all the speakers. And thank you, all the attendees. We've got a bunch of questions that have been asked. And I think, uh, Derek, you want to read the questions? You want me to read the questions? And there's some really good ones that have been posted in the question window. Sure, yeah. So, OK, some of them have already been <clears throat> answered. But I'll just run through because we have a few. So. 
one of them is I happen to read that MT Connect is only read um, or read only, but OPCUA seems to be read and write. So if MT Connect OPCUA is uh, there together, how would the write signals be transferred to industrial assets? Actually, I could talk to that. Um, yeah. So right now we've shown the gateway solution where we've put sort of this middle, we, we have an MT Connect agent, which is read only going to a MT Connect gateway, but there's nothing saying that you can't start with an OPC UA server directly talking to the machine tool and getting data. And I think I was talking about this with our working group a few days ago. Um, you can actually take like a gateway and make it connect up directly to um, the manufacturing equipment with very little work because the model is the same. All you'd have to do then is to add a couple of methods that would be then defined to, let's say, change states or um, manipulate the machine in some way. And that would be about it. So if you wanted to write back, and we may, um, one thing that we were discussing within the working group is we may even define ways to be able to um, standardize some write back information. Um, MT Connect has its own way of doing read write, and that's what we call sort of an observation model or read read model, where the two devices observe each other and then look for um, instructions about what they have to do. And this is actually part five of the MT Connect standard. So that state model that we defined within MT Connect as sort of a read um, observation model could actually be done also with a direct write back using uh, methods and method invocation. So you could look at the way that we've done part five and think about what would that look like as a method invocation. And we could consider doing something similar to that because OPC UA again has this security model which allows us to be able to now contemplate how write back could be done and what this quite the correct security um, constructs are within um, MT Connect. Great. Okay. There is uh, another question that was written to and, and answered, but I think uh, in case everybody hasn't uh, seen it, um, why is there a need for interoperability when we have separate MT Connect and OPCUA frame frameworks separately? So I think maybe just to, I'll, I'll just quickly elaborate you know, on, on this concept. So if your question uh, is, well, why, why do we, you know, why is interoperability so important if you already have separate frameworks? The point is that if you think about it, the information model, the actual, as Will was saying, the actual context of the data being shared, the ability to share that data and to share the meaning of that data, that's the whole point of this and to do it securely. So standards body that you look at out there attempts to take care of that. Unfortunately, often they have to make the tough choice to say, well, how will we actually facilitate moving the data across the network and ensuring it's secure, et cetera, on top of the fact that they're trying to make an information model. So if you look at these, MT Connect did a great job of capturing the meaning of the data and transferring the data back and forth using, you know, basically just a, a highly available technology, which is XML over HTTP. But you look into the broader space uh, and the, the trends, we talk about IoT and the need for security. What happens is you can take that model, which stays relevant because the machines aren't changing, the meanings and the relationships between them aren't changing. But now you're putting that onto a different track. So basically you're transferring that information using the OPC UA system, which enforces the types that are being used. It provides security inherently. It allows you to use different transports below. So it's not just HTTP, which, you know, security wise doesn't have anything. Um, but um, instead, it provides you with the ability to do it, whether you're publishing uh, using there's different methods, pub sub binary transfers, et cetera, and they're all secure. So the point is, in order to share this information more freely, you're taking the best of each one provides the context of the topic empty connect. The other one provides all the other infrastructure to do it, the security, the model enforcement, um, and the interoperability with other systems that don't come from the MT Connect world. Because anyways, that's, that's my point. Anyone want to add anything else to that? 
Yeah, that was a good stand. I mean, I think there's like if you take something like let's say an IC95 standard that's been written using um, OPC UA and MT Connect, suddenly you'll get the ERP and MES information to contextualize that data within the process to the machine tool data that's coming off the machines, in which case then you get this synergistic effect where now I have a way to be able to, in a common um, representation, compare these two different levels of context. One is around the process and the steps in the process, and the other is around the information coming off the machine. Like we're an analytics company, from an analytics point of view, this is gold. I mean, knowing what the machine is supposed to be doing and what it is doing, what it's scheduled to be doing, and all the process steps, that, that's key. And this is the whole value of ecosystem, bringing together your assembly, your inspection, your manufacturing processes and everything else, all that data coming up and not having to have to wrangle multiple different representations and multiple different models and ways of getting data from an impl implementer and a um, application developer standpoint, it's just easier, it makes your life easy. And the whole thing is about making people's lives easier so that they can implement faster and get better analytics and not have to try to guess what the data means and try to figure out how to get at every single special case of connectivity and data access. Great, thanks, Will. Okay, here's another question, uh, important one for, um, uh, given that there are different standards bodies. So it says, our MT Connect and VDMA, which is the European, so let's say sort of counterpart, uh, machine tool companion specification rivals. Do you envision some synthesis in the future? Yeah, I can speak to that, uh, Eric. Um, we're, we're talking to the VDW group, which is creating a similar companion specification we're communicating back and forth what, what is in MT Connect and what is in their standard to harmonize uh, wherever possible. So the two will exist as standards, but they should be compatible in the areas that they overlap. Yeah, maybe just the final thing to add to that. It's um, definitely, a, you know, it's a great question and actually it highlights one of the key things about collaboration this isn't collaboration in isolation. This is collaboration coming together to say, you know, the value comes not just from defining something per standards body, but also as a community, since everybody is sharing the same as uh, for us and we'll refer to it as the same medium. The point here is that since you're using the same medium, you can start to look easily across the different models and start to say, hey, you know what, you know, why don't we start to look to harmonize? It's not enforced. But it's definitely encouraged, and as a matter of fact, that's why on this slide you can see, come back to it, where you show we show empty connect and VDMA. There's a lot of effort going in VDMA, very organized, lots of different groups working on this. But at the same time, there's also a dialogue with empty connect, recognizing that there are values from each that can be used. So, good good question, and the answer is yes. Actually, that that conversation has already started. Okay, uh, let's grab another question. We have a, just a little bit more time here. Um, okay, so a question, is the MT Connect to OPC UA gateway used in this example going to be made available for download or do we need to create our own? Um, the current version, the current um, gateway is a commercial product from uh, Vimana. So we've we built it um, and we've licensed all the underlying technologies that are required, the Flex Toolkit and so forth, to be able to make it. So it's not going to be available as an open source project at this point. Um, there is discussion about developing an open source version of it, um, the non-commercial version, but um, we're not, um, I, that, that's still in discussion. But it is available, it will be available for purchase uh, relatively soon and we plan to leave it as a uh, publicly available uh, service to the community so that you can download it and get an idea. Um, if you want to develop your own commercial product or open source product, um, please contact us. I'd even be willing to help with any open source um, development that anybody wanted to do. Perfect. Okay, another question. If MT Connect is a domain specific information model based on OPC UA information modeling techniques, why do we need a gateway for clients? 
Um, you don't absolutely need the gateway. The gateway is an implementation. Um, it's just a, an easier way since there's already empty connect agents out there. A gateway is an easy way to get immediate access to the data. Um, if you wanted to do a direct OPC UA server that again connects directly to the equipment, you can do that. And uh, we encourage people to do that. They just, you know, if you want to put empty connect um, an OPC UA server on your machine tool, uh, by all means do so. So you could pretty much take the OPC UA server, get rid of the middle tier agent, and um, just stream OPC UA data out using the empty connect model. Yeah, and that's thanks, Will. And that's that's actually a, a very important point, guys. You know, we see this at Tom and I when we do a lot of the OPC Foundation specific stuff. Um, you know, the keys to adoption of this technology and the benefits that it provides is to have a migration path. So I think Will, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on on the empty, empty connect side, but the key thing is that there are a lot of implementations of empty connect already using the the original empty connect specification, XML over HTTP. So one of the things is that since the models, the information models are true between each other, as I think we'll refer to it as the round trip, you can do the round trip between them. So basically the, the advantage is that you can start to take advantage of the empty connect model as it runs on OPC UA, but through these gateways be able to communicate with systems that use the original communication. So it's not meant that that's how you always do it. It's a transition step before things start to be basically literally embedded and natively talking OPC UA using the empty connect model. Is that? Yeah, that's perfectly right. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly correct. I mean, you can use like in this diagram, you could go client, you could do an empty connect client, you could do an OPC UA client. But the idea is that this gives you, it just it's for speed of implementation. So we have a lot of this technology out there today, and it gives you sort of a nice little Lego block solution where you can just snap these things together, put the OPC UA server right next to the empty connect agent, or even um, on it if it's the same machine if it's already there and now you have a way to you know in five minutes to have OPC UA data coming from that empty connect machine as you know things progress in the industry that may not be necessary anymore the gateway may not be necessary you go directly to the machine and that's good too that we're we're happy either way but uh, the whole the whole idea is again I think as you Derek pointed out I mean we just want to get we want to get people going as quickly as possible and again, it's about e making it easy for people to get access to data and get their applications working as quickly as possible. Perfect. Thanks, Will. So I think that's uh, we're uh, we're at the top of the hour here. So um, I think just to wrap things up, and we do have there are other questions. We will be answering them after the fact. So if you didn't hear an answer, we will be getting to it. Uh, so thank you for for submitting those. So just as next step, guys. You know, right now we are in the early adoption stage. Uh, the, the, this, as Will mentioned, the release candidate specification is ready to go. There, we already have an implementation. Definitely looking for to begin into it. Uh, so both, you know, this is a both from NTV Connect Institute and OPC Foundation perspective. So our goal is to promote adoption, and by the way, also you know the ongoing work for harmonizing with VDMA. So just as he, as was asked, uh, that's exactly where we're going. Uh, now, if you guys need to contact anyone on the MT Connect Companion Specification Workgroup, uh, the emails are shown there for Stan uh, Brubaker and Tom Copeland. They're the, the, the co-chairs. And also, if you want to get in touch with uh, the MT Connect, this would be the, the person to talk to there. Now, the, the resources that are available, so both OPC Foundation and MT Connect make the release candidate available. Uh, you have to be a member of the foundation and or the empty connect to to get access to it but regardless of which <clears throat> excuse me camp you're from or both you can access them so the release candidate specification link is shown for the foundation side and you would also navigate the same way in the empty connect side from the empty connect uh, website to get to it uh, the also the description of that can be found on the foundation site and we'd also encourage you to uh, join the opc foundation newsletter we do a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity around the world if you want to tap into some of that and see what the latest and greatest events or uh, developments are in this space uh, definitely something worth you know adding to your 
to your inbox. Okay, so with that, um, that concludes our uh, presentation today about the MT Connect companion specification standard uh, using OpenCUA. Uh, we will be running further webcasts that are more detailed on the implementation side. So everybody who took part in this, we will be sending you additional information as it comes out. Uh, we intend to maintain this uh, series and this dialogue with you and look forward to uh, interacting with you in the future. So again, we hope you found this presentation useful. We welcome all your feedback and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all my presenters and speakers from the OPC Foundation. Thanks to all of you for taking time out from your busy day, and stay tuned for future webinars. Have a great day.